Good morning and welcome. Good morning to everyone. Uh, lovely to see you, to see you all connecting. Uh, congratulations on your decision to start this day by delving into the topic that clusters themselves are, are actually requesting that we discuss, entrepreneurship in Europe, cluster support for startups and scale-ups. It's really lovely to see you, lovely to know that there will be many people in the session joining in the panel discussion. We hope to get many questions from you and we I hope that we will have a lively and uh, a very useful morning. Uh, my name is Jibila Kropaita, I will be uh, your moderator today. And in this uh, specific cluster talk, we will discuss the importance of startups and scale-ups for the European economy. Uh, we will uh, showcase good practices to support them and also give them uh, give an outlook uh, on further actions that are needed to uh, foster entrepreneurship. Uh, as the term implies, and many of you I'm sure know about this, you all definitely know uh, what startups are. Scale-ups are startups that uh, have grown and that have changed scale. Uh, is this is just a reminder for those who may be wondering uh, so to move to the next stage the startup must have succeeded in stabilizing its business model and industrializing its offer uh, in other words it, ha it has proven its viability uh, so they are high growth firms just the startups are they have a really big impact on job creation and on improving innovation and competitiveness on economies and obviously they can be supported with uh, specific customized expertise that can help them develop competitive advantages and benefit from global uh, value chains. Uh, so this is what we will talk about, cluster support for startups and scale-ups. Uh, this event, let me remind you, is uh, part of regular online meetings brought together by the cluster community, uh, more specifically, cluster collaboration platform, European cluster collaboration platform. And uh, we are very happy that you uh, join us every two weeks, uh, more or less. So welcome again. And I will briefly introduce you to the agenda. We'll hear some news from the platform that I've just referred to. Uh, we will have a presentation by the European uh, Commission, uh, DG Grow about access to finance finance for startups and scale-ups and then we will discuss it with uh mostly with startups or uh, science and technology park of Poznan, for example so we'll have uh, uh, a lively debate where you will be uh, encouraged to participate as well and then we will discuss funding opportunities uh by the plastic collaboration platform the short presentation will be delivered from nina who you uh, really know by now, I'm sure. And uh, the housekeeping rules, as always, we will use Slido to launch polls, uh, polls and you will be able to scan your QR code to answer the questions. Uh, this very Zoom app, uh, Q&A function to ask questions is also very handy. The chat function to comment or share links. We will always use the chat to share any links that are mentioned in uh, presentations. If you want to speak, do raise your hand. We will give you the floor. Uh, this session is being recorded. The recording, as all of the other recordings uh, of the previous sessions will be published on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform. So that's it for the housekeeping rules, very uh, roughly. We will now hear the news and Nina uh, is with us. Uh, the floor is yours and we all is. Thanks, Jirila, and good morning to everybody. Uh, let's dive into it. You can still register for the European Cluster Conference, which will take place on the 7th and 8th of May in Brussels. Um, so I think one of the biggest and most important events for clusters uh, this year. And the conference aims to highlight uh, the role of clusters in advancing industrial priorities. Of course, we will talk about the green transition, digital transition, and building resilience. Um, by using key drivers like skills, funding, and technology. So if you haven't done it yet, uh, please register. Come to Brussels on the 7th and 8th um, of May. It will take place in the Square Conference Building um, in Central Brussels. 
And on the 8th, we also offer a matchmaking event um, that is um, as part of the European Cluster Conference. So you will have uh, the chance to find potential business partners and uh, look for future uh, project partners or specific project or services um, that you need for your future endeavors. This will take place on the 8th, uh, physically during four hours at the same venue. And uh, you can register when you register for the conference. Your uh, last chance is also to register for the Clusters Meet Regions in Milan, which will take place next week. So if you want to come to Italy, please do so. On the 26th and 27th, uh, we will discuss um, policy effectiveness of strategies and how they can be implemented on local level hear about best practices and models by uh, Italian and European regions and how clusters collaborate um, with uh, regional governments as well have the opportunity to build networks and to uh, connect the participants. This is hosted in partnership with the Lombardy Intelligent Factory Association and the Lombardy Regional Office. And if uh, that is too soon, then uh, you can also save the date for Graz in Austria, which will take place on the 18th and 19th of June. Um, this will also be accompanied by a matchmaking event and more information will be published soon on the ECCP. Um, but in the meantime, you can save the date uh, for, for this event as well in your calendar. A quick reminder for the Trend Universe, which is a tool that is available on the ECCP. Um, it is a strategic foresight instrument, which allows you to get a better understanding of future trends and impacts that uh, might be interesting for your cluster organization. And during March, you still have a free trial period for all ECCP users, even if you have not updated your profile yet to a pro user. You can uh, get a uh, free trial to the trend universe and to check it out, look at the different industrial ecosystems and the trends uh, that are described there, as well as uh, do your own analysis. So have a look at this uh, when you have a few minutes. We would also like to invite you to the Artificial Intelligence Applications in Business and Everyday Life event, which is a brokerage event on the 10th and 14th of June. So if you're looking into AI, this will be a very good opportunity to get new connections and to look into the diverse AI applications that might be, look into what kind of transformative advancements um, this could bring and facilitate Changing that for the participants. Um, this will be hosted online on the B2 Match platform and also in Warsaw. There's a workshop connected to it. Um, so I have a look at uh, the links in the chat uh, to uh, this brokerage event on artificial intelligence. And last but not least, um, the last invitation of this time for the uh, 16th of April for the Advanced Manufacturing Industry Conference. Also, if you work in the manufacturing, this might be a very interesting conference uh, taking place in Brussels and hosted by the European Commission. So it will bring together policymakers, corporate leaders, academics, as well as institutional representatives to discuss what are currently the challenges uh, in advanced manufacturing, what are bottlenecks, and what are the areas of opportunity so that industry remains competitive and registration is open until the 29th of March. So follow the link and have a look um, at the event details and the registration. And with that, I hand over back to you so that we can get into the topic of the day. Thank you so much, uh, Nina, for this uh, brief reminder of the news. Uh, we will now go into the main presentation uh, from the commission, the policy officer of DG Crow, Armando Melone is with us. And as I said before, he will uh, guide us through the access to finance for startups and scale-ups from the commission's perspective. Uh, Armando, we are happy to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. 
Uh, my name is Armando Merone, I work in uh, DG Grow, uh, DG for uh, Industry Entrepreneurship and SMEs, and uh, in particular in the unit dealing with access to finance. So we cover uh, uh, investments uh, and financing for um, all types of SMEs and also for the industry. And within uh, uh, the context of SMEs, of course, uh, we focus a lot on uh, startups and uh, scale-ups uh, uh, Financing. So today, in around 10 minutes, I would like to give you more or less a glance of uh, what are the bottlenecks and what are the current solutions that uh, uh, the Commission is uh, as, as, uh, in place to, to tackle the various gaps. Uh, to start with, uh, uh, just I think all of us know that uh, um, startups and scale-ups uh, uh, role in Europe are quite important. Uh, uh, they are like... Uh, uh, the drive of uh, innovation. Uh, we have in Europe, I think, uh, a very uh, good uh, um, batch and uh, culture and experience with academic research, with uh, uh, the, the what comes out of the research, uh, the labs, uh, the, uh, the universities. But then when it's, uh, it's, um, it's up to then commercializing the um, the ideas, uh, it starts to become um, a bit more difficult to get the right financing. Uh, we always compare uh, with, for instance, the United States situation in Europe, and we see that we are very strong in academic research and we are in in the applied research. But then, indeed, when it's, uh, it's about uh, going to the market, we see that the uh, demand and supply of financing uh, in uh, comparable um, areas, like for instance, the US is completely different. This is uh, uh, a, a something that is a bit uh, um, uh, happening since uh, a long time in Europe, and uh, uh, in the I have to say that in the last years uh, the the issues have been tackled quite effectively. We are still uh, in um, in a big uh, uh, gap. Uh, but uh, we can see that there are different uh, so-called valleys of debt between the startup phase and the scale-up phase. So just uh, uh, one of the issues could be, as we all know, um, for uh, startups and scale-ups, uh, innovative ones who don't have perhaps the cash flow generated to repay a debt, uh, equity financing is a very important source of finance. But uh, and like we know that uh, the development of uh, venture capital, for instance, is still uh to be uh to arrive to a certain level where it could be um uh, like creating like a very strong uh, cross-border eu market in europe we have a lot of uh, uh, funding available in member states but uh, we are trying to develop a, like a so-called capital market in order uh, to improve the availability across across border this is also uh, due to the need to um, uh, attract more investors into this space. So, uh, for instance, pension funds and insurance companies. So these are more or less the issues uh, which are in place. Uh, just a number, like uh, in, in the United States, uh, there is uh, 11 times more uh, scale-up financing uh, for, uh, uh, for scale-ups than uh, Europe. So. This uh, is uh, more or less the context of the situation. Now I will focus a bit uh, in the next uh, um, uh, in the in the next minutes about uh, what are the solutions that the EU has in place. Uh, the um, the main uh, flagship program which the EU has in place to financing uh, uh, the real economy is the so-called InvestEU program. And I invite you to go to the next slide. Yes. Uh, the InvestEU is basically a, a program which uh, um, uh, is backed by uh, a, a 26 billion uh, guarantee uh, from the from the EU for the implementation of uh, financial instruments uh, uh, by means of uh, implementing partners. What does it mean? That the financing is not given by the Commission to the company, uh, is not given uh, uh, by uh, our implementing parts such as the European Investment Bank, European Investment Funds, uh, in, in particular investment fund to the company, but it's something which is decentralized uh, by means of the financial intermediaries such as banks, uh, microfinance providers, equity investors, uh, etc. Then there are also direct loans from AB, but I will tell you later. Uh, so this, the how it works in InvestEU is that the guarantee is uh, provided uh, for the uh, implementing partners, which are, are being selected on a regular basis. So there are 
many of them, uh, the most imp- most relevant ones are the European Investment Bank Group, which basically uh, uh, through the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Fund, they implement uh, uh, most of the uh, of the invest you program on behalf of the commission and then in addition to them there is also a local like national implementing partners such as national promotional banks i would mention for instance you know casa deposito press in italy and like all the national ones which are uh, joining uh, uh, this pool of uh, implementing partners in europe to um, uh, deploy uh, invest you um, the majority of this happens through the selections of financial intermediaries so basically the job of, for instance, European investment funds and uh, the National Promotion Bank is to uh, contract uh, financial trend readers such as banks, microfinance, equity, venture capital funds, and then it's up to the to these investors, to these uh, financial intermediaries, to provide the financing at the local level. So, if I am, for instance, a startup so a scale up at the local level. What I can do is uh, I can contact the local venture capital fund uh, or, or like um, any any kind of financial intermediaries available at local level to then uh, um, uh, submit my my business my financing application. There is a website. It's called the www.accesstofinance.eu. I will put this into the chat later so that uh, everybody is available. Everybody is aware. Uh, where um, all the list the lists of the all financial intermediaries are available with all the conditions, so that the companies could uh, apply uh, uh, for a direct contact with the, the, these intermediaries. So, in sum, is not the, co- the commission for who con- uh, gives money. It, this is a financial interest. So, it has a very good uh, risk sharing mechanism with uh, the private sector. So, is uh, is has a very good leverage effect, meaning that with some money. Put by the EU, there is a much additional money put by intermediaries, which amplifies in a way uh, the effect of um, of uh, the budget deployed, in, especially in times of uh, scarce uh, public budgets uh, like uh, like today. If we go to the next slide, uh, we can see a bit uh, how it works. Basically, uh, as as I said before, uh, the, the guarantee of 26 billion provided by the European Union uh, um, will mobilize uh, until the end of the program 2027 uh, and even beyond because some investments continue also beyond this deadline uh, around 372 billion investments and this will be uh, done as, as as mentioned for instance uh, um, if we see the most orange uh, box, uh, one of the four uh, objectives uh, of the investeu is uh, SMEs, and uh, this is uh, uh, together with the research and innovation digitalization uh, um, area. Uh, I think the most relevant for the startups and scale-ups, uh, because basically we will have, we have a dedicated uh, um, window, which is the SME window, uh, and uh, um, in this we have uh, I will I will show you later some uh, equity and guarantee uh, schemes. But uh, for the equity schemes, which are very relevant for startup scale-ups, we work jointly, jointly with the research, innovation, and digitalization window. Um, that uh, we have a joint uh, equity window under SMEs and the research innovation that provides uh, uh, venture capital financing and other for uh, especially for um, SMEs. Um, uh, startups and scale-ups are uh, among the biggest beneficiaries of this. I will show this later. If we go to the, the next slide. We see uh, the guarantee products available. So this is the depth part. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I was saying before that uh, uh, startups sometimes don't have enough cash flow to uh, use depth, but of course there are also a, a lot of startups which uh, are uh, like the target of uh, our guarantee uh, depth guarantee products. So we have uh, uh, a, a number of uh, Guarantee how it works. Guarantee uh, is uh, very simple. So basically, the EU provides a guarantee. Uh, so the, let's say uh, the uh, the implementing partners, like ch- such as the EIF, provides a guarantee to the bank, and the bank, thanks to this guarantee, uh, has is as more is more encouraged to provide a, a loan to the to the company. So basically, these uh, guarantees from the EU uh, help uh, somehow to. Uh, mm, uh, uh, access uh, uh, debt financing for the SMEs. I will try to speed up a bit because I'm a bit late, but uh, basically there are four uh, areas of the guarantee products, the competitiveness, which is a general one, one more for innovation and digitalization, cultural credit sectors, and, uh, uh, and uh, um, the last one on sustainability. If we go to the next slide, 
This is the equity products, uh, which are this is the one which is joined uh, with uh, uh, the R&I window. And here we, we support the different policy objectives. For instance, capital markets union, which I was mentioning before, uh, some enabling sectors uh, such as digital and the others, also climate and uh, environmental solutions and uh, digital and cultural creative uh, sectors. Uh, this is the equity products, which work mainly through uh, venture capital funds. If we go to the next slide, uh, we see that uh, um, uh, together with these uh, horizontal uh, uh, like vertical uh, objectives, there are also some horizontal uh, ones. So they are dedicated products for, to boost some specific objectives of the of the European Union. And a couple of them are very relevant for this purpose, because the one is the so-called escalar mechanism, which is a, 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 a particular uh, support for venture capital funds, which is a risk sharing mechanism. It's a bit technical, but basically compared to a traditional venture capital funds, this is a way to somehow attract more uh, investors because of the benefits which this uh, mechanism has compared to a normal uh, venture capital uh, um, uh, product. And the IPO is uh, is uh, dedicated to the uh, to the funds which invest in Supre uh, at and post IPO phases. So this is uh, for the, uh, to to create somehow the the last mile of uh, uh, the funding escalators, which starts with startups, continues then with scale ups, and then uh, sometimes the last uh, exit for uh, scale up investors is IPO. So this is a way to somehow uh, improve a bit the listing. Um, into Europe, which uh, are a bit uh, um, uh, less developed than um, than other uh, geographies. If we go to the next slide, uh, I will com complete the 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 overview with other programs which are beyond InvestEU. <laughs> One is the European Innovation Council. You may have heard about this uh, uh, big program, which is composed of three components: the Pathfinder Transition Accelerator. Uh, basically, Pathfinder and Transition is for the lower TRL phases, so for the uh, companies in the in the um, very early stage before commercialization, and so it's mainly uh, done through grants. And the accelerator is mainly it's it's a, it's for TRLs six to nine, so for developments and uh, uh, and uh, scale up. And this is uh, made of uh, uh, grants. is like uh, it provides plan financing forms of grants and. Uh, I, will, I don't have the time to go through the mechanics of the European Innovation Council, but this is uh, certainly a very important uh, uh, tool that is not uh, um, like uh, deployed through the as InvestEU through the French intermediaries, but it, especially the pathfinding transition is due to grants and then accelerator. There is a, a so-called EIC fund which uh, um, provides equi direct equity for companies uh, uh, in, um, in these phases. If we go to the next slide, I'm almost done with. Uh, the, I would like to mention this European Tax Champions Initiative, which is a, a um, initiative where member states put together resources uh, to uh, invest into very big funds, because this is a, one of the important issues that scale up has have, is that there is not enough funding, uh, like not big funds enough to uh, uh, provide financing for them. So the initiative, uh, which started uh, uh, last year, is that uh, like uh, to invest into very big, uh, you can see the target funds is above 100 billion. So meaning that it's very big uh, funds which provide uh, uh, equity for uh, for scale ups. These, uh, the, the objective is to invest in 10, 15 funds, which is what is really missing in Europe. Because in Europe, we have a, a lot of funding for startup, but we miss the big funds because uh, sometimes there is no scale. Uh, uh, institutional investors are not very much interested. So these initiatives try to compensate this uh, gap. And uh, if we go to the uh, uh, the next slide, uh, I will just uh, um, mention uh, this. Uh, uh, this is a policy project. You may have heard that there is a lot of fuss around uh, politically about the Capital Markets Union. Uh, this is a project which is in place already since 2015, but uh, um, uh, now the, I, I think politically there is a need to revamp this. Uh, it, and it's about basically uh, trying to create more uh, uh, capital market financing for our companies and also other objectives, uh, um, such as integrating the single market. This is very important for the purpose of today, because uh, um, if we had a real cross-border uh, market in Europe, uh, we uh, like our startups and scale-ups would have better access to 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 this while uh, sometimes this is national fragmentation 
which hampers somehow the uh, possibilities for companies to get financing. So even uh, like reducing the bottlenecks in the regulatory framework and in other other fields for um, companies is uh, an additional tool uh, beyond the pure money, the pure financing that I've been describing before to complete the availability of um, uh, opportunities for our startups and scale-ups. I think this is the last slide for me. Uh, so I I hope you you will have a nice discussion. I will stay here. So I saw that there were some questions. Uh, I am happy to take them if there are. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. I will ask them right away. Before I ask the question that we got from Miguel, I want to uh, double check with uh, the Cap Capital Markets Union. As far as I understand it, you're basically saying that uh, when it's established, it will help diminish the death valleys uh, between startup phase and the scale-up phase, as you phrase it in the beginning. Yeah, because basically, um, let's take, for instance, the market for venture capital. The fact that you don't have enough uh, big big uh, funds. Hmm. Uh, if you are a pension scheme or an insurance company, so you don't have the vehicles to invest uh, uh, appropriate money, so they prefer somehow to invest where uh, uh, there are big, uh, like where there there uh, the, the the funds are bigger. So sometimes uh, creating, a, I take also the the example of IPO. If we have I don't know 30, uh, 35 stock markets in Europe compared to US, where they have one, two, or three. Of course, the the fragmentation, the liquidity, the scale of uh, exit. For uh, startups, this affects the whole uh, funding escalator. So, I mean, if we don't have uh, uh, enough investors, enough funds, if we don't have enough uh, IPOs, this, of course, uh, and investors which want to, to invest in a startup or in scale ups ask themselves, yes, okay, invest, but then if I, I don't have uh, the next stage to, to whom to sell my stake, mm -hmm. how, why should. So, it's in a way, uh, I think the view should be holistic in a way. So, the whole. Uh, uh, perspective so trying to somehow address not only from the financing side but also from a regulatory point of view uh, this aspect and this is what um, the capital markets union is a full of uh, is a is a list of uh, different actions that are tackling different aspects and i think they will be even revamped in the near next commission next one day okay so what are the deadline uh, what are the dates that we need to be thinking of when we think about the um... Capital Markets Union. Well, uh, here uh, we had uh, uh, a couple of action plans already. The first in 2015 and the second one in 2020. So basically, there is a, this is an ongoing project. It's like the, the European single yeah. market. So it's something which will go on, uh, I think, for next decades. But the Commission is coming up with the regular action plans. I, I we don't have any commitments for the next uh, Commission, but I see that uh, from from ECB, from the Eurogroup, from uh, from various uh, from various uh, sources uh, or information, there is a big focus now. There is a letter and drug report which will come up uh, in the course of the year, which I will focus on that. So, um, I think this will be an important priority because in times of shortage of uh, resources of public resources, uh, the the leveraging of the private uh, capital is essential. It's the only way to somehow. Uh, compensate the, the lack of resources that the public does. So the guarantees that uh, InvestEU, for instance, uses is a good way to uh, to tackle that. But mm. without uh, uh, the, um, the money that comes from the private sector, this uh, the public sector could not uh, uh, do everything by itself, of course. Okay, okay. Uh, Miguel is asking, uh, is InvestEU accessible to any startup or just to the ones no, that no, no, have any, already been funded any, by any, no, there okay. is no i mean so you just find like there is no it's a purely commercial transaction so the startup just sees what is the bank what is the funds and they submit their business plan the application for loan like uh, for any there is no link to any other eu public resource uh, eu program no uh horizon 2020 nothing you just have to have your startup and then uh start the process all anew. Okay, uh, thank you so much. We will now move, uh, do stay with us. And in case there are questions to the commission uh, related to funding, anything to, uh, to what uh, has been said, uh, do ask them in the chat uh, or 
there will be a chance also to raise your hand and ask it live, but we will now uh, go to clusters themselves and see what they think. Uh, uh, but before that happens, also let's check the temperature and climate uh, by using Slido. Uh, you can either scan your code and that's probably the easiest way to do it because you could also be putting in a hashtag. But now since you probably have your devices with you, do scan it and uh, do go directly to where we ask a question, uh, which you will now see immediately when you uh, have scanned the code and that's just for us to understand who you are even though most of you have said hi in the chat and thank you for that we know the countries now we know uh, what clusters you represent and uh, we're very happy that you're so enthusiastic to participate here but the question the first question that comes up and I see people are answering do you offer any services to support startups and scale-ups? Yes, very frequently. Yes, from time to time. No, we are not involved in that kind of support. Not yet, but I would like to learn more. So there are four options and the most common so far is uh, a very frequent participation, frequent support. Uh, do you offer any services to support startups and scale-ups? Most of you say, 65% uh, of you say that you do it very frequently. Basically, the rest, 24% from time to time, uh, and uh, uh, just 3% uh, of you do not use it yet, but would like to uh, learn more. And for those who have not joined the Slido uh, yet, you can also do it not necessarily by scanning. You can go to slido.com and then put in the hashtag startups and it will lead you and it will take you exactly to where we are now and we are at the stage where we find out that uh, most of you do offer services to support startups and scale-ups we will be also obviously able to learn what exactly they are uh, but for now I think we get a good picture and um, we are asking you also what kind of support mechanisms do you find useful uh, what kind of support mechanisms do you find useful? Uh, you can put in, yes, you're typing, so you can put in anything you like. What kind of support mechanisms uh, do you find useful? Acceleration, uh, incubation, investor you, uh, financing, Horizon 2020, incubation, mentoring, Incubation is the most common one. Mentoring, acceleration, right? Thank you so much for this. Networking, access to funding, um, access to funding, acceleration, 10 other, 12 other participants are typing and there are very, uh, many options, but uh, most common ones are acceleration, mentoring, and incubation, mentoring, uh, networking, access to funding, invest EU, your clusters, financing, support for trade affairs, uh, financial needs analysis, uh, connection to venture capital and other funding, overview of the existing tools to support scale, uh, pitches, events, mentorship, basically that's everything that can be available i think and i'm so glad that there are so many of you providing all of these options access to partners communities horizon europe uh mentoring and acceleration still uh, remaining the most uh, common two um replies and responses uh i think we can wait for the other four people that are typing and then end it there and see if uh, that changes the situation but i think and nothing will change the acceleration and mentoring and incubation now being the most uh, common uh, responses. So uh, thank you so much for this. What kind of support do you offer for startups and scale-ups will also be the question that I will be asking clusters themselves who will now uh, be joining us on the panel discussion. So thank you for this uh, mm, for this uh, Q&A, but uh, the panel debate participants, who I'm very happy to welcome, are International Cooperation Officer at Poznan Science and Technology Park, 
Anna uh, Durch. Uh, it's also Cluster Manager at uh, Ireland Southeast Financial Services Cluster, Trina Murphy, uh, head of uh, uh, Stratofair, uh, OWL uh, Cluster Manager, uh, Cluster Management, Martin Rabe is with us as well. Chamber of Commerce, uh, Genova, Raffaella Bruzzone, and also Ecosystem Director, uh, Poles, uh, uh, and that's uh, Stephanie uh, Sean. Benissimo, la telecamera inizia a non funzionare, ma è ovvio. And I want to welcome everybody now. Thank you so much for joining. And let's just uh, start by uh, you each giving a brief introduction, uh, because you, not all of you are exactly clusters. The Technology Park, for example, is not this, you know, exactly a cluster. So if you could just say a couple of words, uh, because your cameras are on, we can see you. And as I said, we are very happy to have you with us. So do uh, just say a couple of words of uh, what kind of uh, an entity you represent. So let us start with probably with you, Anna. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, great to be here. And uh, uh, to say a couple of words about Poznan Science and Technology Park, which indeed not is not a cluster per se, or not only a cluster, because we have a small cluster, um, a cluster initiative focused on waste uh, management. Uh, but in general, we are a business support institution working with startups and scale-up for a couple of uh, years uh, now supporting their growth. Uh, we are focusing on uh, biotechnology, chemistry, ICT, and uh, we're running uh, projects, programs uh, that I think I will have a chance to uh, say a bit more um, later uh, during our discussion. But when you say startups and scale-ups, would you also agree to what the commission has pointed out, which I can summarize uh, by saying that basically there are um, less issues with startups than uh, or with scale-ups. Would that be fair to make such a conclusion? I would say that uh, in the sense of uh, sources of support, yes. Uh, in terms of uh, maturity uh, and uh, quality of collaboration. Me personally, I prefer to work with scale-ups. They know better what they want, what they need. Uh, they are more um, motivated and uh, more focused on uh, on the goal. But there are less, less funding. There's, yes, there's less funding true. for them. In that sense, in that sense, it's a more difficult uh, uh, group uh, to, to support uh, because we have to be more creative um, when it comes to uh, tools that uh, we might use. So basically, you like more challenge. Is that what you're saying? Apparently, yes. Apparently. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's move on to Martin. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am from the cluster. Um, it's OWL, Intelligent Technical Systems, Ostwestfalen Lippe. It's the region in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany. So the cluster is characterized uh, by companies who are um, yeah, manufacturers and uh, machine builders and um, building automation technology. So we are basically an industry 4.0 cluster, uh, more than 10 years old. And uh, what we did before uh, three years is um, building up the initiative stratosphere, which is for venture clienting. We were um, thinking about yeah, how to integrate startups in our cluster activities, since this is a quite vibrant uh, cluster. And uh, there we came to the point that there is a gap between um, when it comes to corporations with larger um, uh, enterprises or SMEs, that there is a gap between yeah, you having like pitch events, networking events and corporate venture capital. And there we came to venture clienting quite early. Right now it's a rising uh, topic, but there we were quite early. Venture clienting means that a startup is going to be a supplier of a larger company, also of an SME, but a more established company. Uh, and the idea is that the company um, is giving a contract, a project, a budget to a startup. And the startup has to deliver a prototype applying their solution or technology to a product, but also to a process of the company. It can be a production process, logistics, supply chain, also business processes. 
Um, and there are for both sides many advantages. So for the startups, it's very interesting because they are getting cash flow, cash flow without uh, giving shares or IP. They are getting uh, on a very early stage also some good references. Yeah, when they work with well-known companies, uh, and on the other side for the larger companies, less risk, faster results than than um, corporate venture capital. So for both sides, a win-win situation. And in this cluster uh, with Stratosphere, this initiative, we are running this venture clienting for a group of large companies. This mm. has also some synergies Yeah, that we are doing a centralized scouting, finding the right startups everywhere in the world. So we are not focusing on just Germany. We are focusing on Europe and also worldwide. Um, yeah, and that's the, the, the basic idea. Would you just explain how that fits into this picture of startup to scale up scenario? Does that then help them? This uh, uh, venture uh, clienting does that help uh, the startups move to the scale up phase as well? Getting involved with a larger company or just not yeah, necessarily. Sure. Especially when it comes to tech or deep tech startups who has who are struggling then to generate cash flow very early. So, of course, they rely on, on equity, but, um, yeah, of course, they don't would like to give away the equity too early. So, mm. definitely it helps them. Then they are working uh, with uh, experienced engineering teams of the larger companies, so they can validate their technology very early. So, in terms of technical uh, yeah, feasibility, but also viability, whether it works in the process, things like that this is also a very important a point for them to get mm. uh, market feedback and technical feedback. Mm -hmm. And when you say that it's beneficial for the companies themselves as well, uh, and you say that you have like sort of a group of large companies, is it easy to uh, find them? Do you have to put in a lot of work to get them involved or are they themselves willing to participate? Without you, yeah. Even as the them. as the model is not so well known, it's it's yeah, it's a lot of work in explaining the model because it's not well known, and we are completely private financed. So the the company mm. are uh, yeah paying like a member fee to finance our activities. Right now we are uh, we are growing right now with uh, five uh, large companies, but we are also supporting. Then as SMEs, this is more work to really um, uh, convince SMEs to invest in that. And the idea is to centralize some of the work that has to be done in the companies to engage more SMEs because you, yeah, you need to have someone to take care uh, about the scouting, to take care about the projects itself. And there is the barrier, especially for SMEs, to go into that. Okay, thank you so much for uh, this. Very interesting. Uh, we have just learned more about venture clienting. We'll see if anyone else uses that or has used it. Uh, and uh, I think we'll go to Katrina now and uh, see what she thinks and what she has to say about her cluster, first of all. Good morning. I'm loving this. I'm learning so much already. <laughs> um, I'm Katrina Murphy and thank you. It's an honor to be here. Delighted to be joining you from Ireland Southeast Financial Services Cluster. So we work very hard with our startups and scale ups. They're a vital component of our cluster. Um, our region really recognizes that fostering entrepreneurship will drive that industrial transformation process and hence become the cornerstone of our economic growth. And Financial services are recognized in our own region as um, in the top four um, sectors, anyway, for our business and key drivers for innovation and job creation. So we do our best to seek to support those parties, enable them with our expertise and to bring them to a development of competitive advantage to thrive in a global market. Um, and we've got a couple of USBs and I suppose Nina referred to her passion for scale ups and I, I suppose it can kind of come. I share that, but there's a, quite a number of SMEs in the fintech world and financial services, the traditional world would be more the Goliaths that we would all recognize and named brands. So one of those brands um, has scaled very, very quickly. And we are now, I suppose, positioning that hero as maybe uh, how I would describe as a big brother as sorts. And I'll go into it in more detail. So it's transformation. We often recognize that unicorns don't come easy. They take time. 
Um, but investing in them is huge benefit for your individual regions because like what Martin is doing there in terms of taking on the corporate giants, bringing the SMEs in, that's what we're seeing happening now with our own fintechs that are growing. This is the corporate giant, the, the company that only incepted less than 12 years ago, um, now licensed across 92 different licensing structures in 201 countries, transferring funds across 141 different currencies. So they are the Goliath on our doorstep and they are the party who is enabling taking prototypes to purchase orders similar to what Martin is doing as well. So I think the initiative that Stratosphere have is exceptional. It makes more sense in the in the um, manufacturing world, but we're trying to enable similar to that in financial services. All Do you have a special more. title for it as well when you say that it's similar? Does that does the model have any, you know, uh, name? <laughs> I tell you now, Zavella, so we're so bespoke. It is a case of answering. <laughs> and there's crook, there's crypto client structures, there's fund recs, there's lots of others. Um, so it depends. Financial services a broad scale. So from one moment I'm talking insurance and going into particular areas. And um, maybe that's a, an error of our own. Maybe we need to look at more niche areas and develop more, but our resources have to deal with what we have. So we literally will tailor sit one-to-one -one with the SME and the Goliath as well and understand where each other's pain points are and bridge them together where we see that natural synergy. And that worked really well for us in the fund sector where we took um, a digitization pain point in the fund sector and a startup company called Fundrex and we brought them through further transitions. So again, we can chat more about it, but thank you for being there. Um, I'm sure again, together, sharing more of our knowledge across the European clusters and looking for those niche little twigs because it's hard to pull one straw out of a bale of hay and find those matchmaking parts and um, that really work. But um, we have, as cluster managers, have to trudge through many, many, many pieces of straw to find those connections. But the vibrant, vibrant ecosystem is certainly there for nurturing that innovation and fostering the growth and propelling our European economic economy forward. So thank, thank you, you so much. Sharing. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. We'll move now to uh, Stephanie. And uh, uh, Stephanie, uh, if you're with us, do uh, give us an introduction of uh, what you do. And uh, if you want to approach the, you know, that problem or the specific model, uh, the support that you offer for startups and scale-ups already, that would be fine too. Okay. So um, thank you for welcoming me on this um, webinar. So um uh, I'm Stephanie Shonsom, uh, Ecosystem Director of the SCS, it's quite a long word, quite difficult to pronounce, but SCS Cluster. Uh, we are a non-profit organization and we are based in the southeast of France. If you know Marseille and if you know Nice on the French Riviera, so we are between Marseille and Nice. Uh, we are a digital and photonics uh, deep tech cluster. Uh, gathering about 300 members, um, and most of them, about 70%, are startups or scale-ups or SMEs. Uh, and um, it's quite a big part, which represents the way and the, 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 the economic uh, uh, landscape of France. You have plenty of small companies. And uh, we, are, we are a technology-based cluster, in specific domains, so uh, microelectronics, electronics, uh, Internet of Things, IoT, cybersecurity, data and AA, and um, photonics. So very deep tech, so very peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer, uh, mm. companies that are talking together on technic technical and technological issues. And uh, we uh, are quite a very old cluster because in France, there is a public uh, industrial policy going on for a very long time, for 20 years now. And um, what we do and what we've done for all these years is to develop added value services uh, to support mainly startups and scale-ups because, or SMEs, because what could you really do for a very large company? <laughs> it's yeah. not easy for a cluster to know what value you have for a very large company, except on R&D project support or except on putting together 
these small companies with the large companies, that's quite interesting. It's a way of doing open innovation. So and when you say added value services, uh, is that what you mean? Or would you uh, give a, another example? Of yeah, added value services is apart from the, the basic one, one, one to one tailored connections, networking events, etc. That's quite basic in, in, in all our ecosystems. But added value can be either very technological issues. So uh, for instance, uh, you you know that our, that, that regulations are coming up in Europe regarding cybersecurity issues for electronic and digital products. So what's, that's what we call the Cybersecurity Act and Cyber Resilience Act. So these small companies, startups, don't have all the resources necessary to be compliant with what is coming up. So our job is to, to, to give them the, way, the, the good resources, expertise and ways to be compliant with what, mm. with what will be coming. You know, If they're not compliant, then they cannot go on the market. So you just stop the, uh, the mm -hmm. of the company. So it's quite anticipating. So that's what we do. We anticipate what's going on later on for regulation, for instance. That's one way of doing an added value service. And uh, of course, we are very much involved in, in private equity issues because you know in France, if you don't have equity, you cannot access to public funding. It's quite difficult for startups because they don't have that much equity. That's for sure at the beginning. And uh, we do a lot of things at the national level, not, not, not at the regional level because the other problem in France is that uh, you need to bypass the the regional isolation for um, for the uh, private equity because the VCs are mainly based. We know we are a centralized country, mainly based in Paris and Paris region. So the rest of France doesn't exist. So we have uh, a little bit of difficulties to 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 give visibility to companies that are looking for funding, private funding. So that's also one of the added value we do. And of course, we, we do plenty of different others uh, of value services. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that was uh, very important and uh, interesting uh, to hear. Uh, Rafael, would you also say that uh, uh, you are experiencing similar issues, like for example, the one that has just been mentioned that the, all of the VCs are in big city and there are difficulties to give visibility to companies that are looking for funding or would you uh, stress other issues and would you just say uh, what kind of support you offer for startups and scale-ups? Okay, many thanks for this opportunity to bring our experience. I'm representing the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Genova, Liguria region. So geographically speaking, I'm quite close to the colleague Stephanie, who has just made her intervention. And we have a long lasting collaboration, I would say, uh, between our regions uh, in terms of cross-border collaboration. I will go through some say keywords that have been mentioned uh, already this morning because I guess that most of them uh, do um, refer to our activity uh, basically due to the fact that I'm a member amongst many, many others at European level and beyond of the widest uh, European uh, supported network to help SMEs become more competitive and uh, innovative, which is named Enterprise Europe Network, as you all know. And I've got the pleasure to chair a thematic group within the network, which is named Access to Finance. So as you may guess, we have, um, I mean, a, a very good knowledge of um, of the needs and the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the frequent questions that in particular micro and small sized companies raise at local and national level and European level. And what we are trying to do as a network is to cope with these uh, needs and to find solutions for these challenges, being an active part of an ecosystem which can be um, looked at from a local, regional perspective, but as well as from a national and European-wide perspective, since as a network uh, we have um, close collaboration with uh, clusters uh, and thanks once again for this opportunity to uh, raise this point together with you this morning, but also with other European level stakeholders 
like uh, business angel networks and VCs, uh, representatives, and uh, uh, many other um, stakeholders that can in turn help all together with us supporting uh, micro companies and startups and scale-ups growth. But coming to what we are commenting right now, uh, basically, there are a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, challenges, as we all mentioned, uh, for what concerns SMEs. But what we are trying to offer as uh, added value services is, first of all, say the, 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 the overall um, uh, a sort of overall uh, assessment of business needs when they are looking for growth opportunities for new markets. And we are then providing them services, enabling to uh, grow their capacity to access to finance. Uh, it has been made at the, at the beginning InvestEU program, but also the uh, equity channels, the debt financing. And I guess uh, that overall in Europe, uh, but in particular, I would say in southern part of Europe, there is still a limited knowledge of certain financial uh, opportunities, financial means like equity, for instance, uh, and also the InvestEU, which is a great uh, support program for um, for SMEs is still um, to, cert to a certain extent not that much known uh, to local uh, SMEs and that's a part of our activity to make them available to make them aware of what the financial opportunities are out there. And another uh, pillar, I would say, for what concerns startup growth and then turning into scale-ups and uh, even more is the partnering opportunities and as a network collaborating with other uh, stakeholders as i was mentioning before we are providing them in a sort of client journey approach as we call it in the network we are providing them services and connections with other uh, technology or financial partners across europe and beyond so i would say that uh, we are part of a greater ecosystem and that's also the the force and the strength that we can in turn uh, make available to our companies and just one last point um you have raised the cross border collaboration i guess that there are there are a lot of opportunities to increase uh, the capacity to work together as a business support organization and and other actors thanks to also european funded programs like the territorial cooperation programs the family uh, of the interreg programs which can incredibly help and that's a, a local experience we have uh, help the capacity to develop common policies and also common methodologies and very lately, we are now experiencing, experiencing some opportunities to develop uh, jointly, um, um, uh, joint measures, sorry, under the uh, ERDF and the structural funds in general operational programs for cross-border companies. So that's a field of uh, work that could be further uh, developed later on. But thanks for the opportunity to share it with you. Thank you, Raffaella. And uh, I think basically everybody has uh, said something on how uh, they support uh, startups and scale-ups added value. But Anna, I think uh, we missed it, missed it out in the beginning when you spoke. Do you want to add anything to this very big list of uh, uh, means how uh, Glasses support startups and scale-ups? Yeah, indeed, I, I focused more on my institution and uh, my colleagues uh, went directly to support programs. In our case, uh, we are focusing on uh, three probably uh, main um, challenges that uh, uh, startups in a scaling phase are facing. Uh, first is um, uh, lack of clients. So what uh, Martin was saying about um, uh, connecting uh, uh, startups uh, with uh, bigger players, with corporates to help them with um, building uh, credibility and building their uh, their their client uh, base is also something uh, we've been doing uh, we have a um, corporate startup collaboration programs uh, based on the challenges um, that uh, um, corporates are um, uh, sharing and startups that might uh, deliver solutions to, uh, to those uh, challenges uh, second thing is uh, we work with uh, startups 
that for whom a way to scale is uh, to go um, abroad to um, extend their operations into different markets. So here uh, we are focusing mostly on uh, connecting them with relevant um, uh, clients, with relevant, uh, uh, sometimes relevant business support institutions for some soft lending, to, for them to uh, take advantage of soft lending um, um, programs that our partners abroad are offering. And um, the, sometimes also we, uh, we are giving them opportunity to join us uh, for uh, market discovery missions. Uh, and to let them help them explore those new markets, uh, get to know the um, uh, way those markets are operating and uh, um, verify if um, this is the market opportunity and market uh, they should expand to. And uh, last but not least, uh, many times mentioned already money. Uh, we have uh, initiatives that are... Um, well, when we are uh, giving grants, basically, uh, to to startups for them to scale, uh, exactly on Friday we open a call for ready to scale accelerator, uh, where uh, deep tech startups, digital and deep tech startups from uh, all over Europe, uh, can apply to um, uh, be granted uh, up to sixty thousand euro. So it's uh, a nice amount, of course, for AIC companies that were mentioned here. It's it's it might not be uh, such a, a great uh, thing comparing to AIC uh, budgets, but uh, I think it's still uh, uh, an interesting offer for those who uh, want to scale, who uh, are TRL five and up, um, who are uh, interested in uh, developing their product because the grant can be. Uh, spent on product development, on uh, business uh, missions slash travels, and for buying external expertise. So we are giving opportunities. We are helping, but not holding hands. Uh, and uh, we are providing them with our contacts, access to our um, uh, pool of mentors uh, so they can um, contact those mentors directly and uh, um start cooperation um, using the grant to to buy um, support and, and uh, consultancy services. So those are things that we are focusing on now. We also have um, quite a good network and quite a tight collaboration with business angel networks. So this is another way to secure um, uh, access to finance. Uh, and uh, what we're trying to do, because that's uh, a lesson we've learned, is that um, we're trying to educate not only startups slash scale-ups, but also business angels, uh, especially in terms of uh, working with uh, deep tech startups. You know, we all know a bit more risky um, type of uh, uh, companies uh, with a longer um, uh, time they need to develop their products, uh, be profitable and so on. Okay, uh, that's a very um, big uh, list. And uh, thank you so much for mentioning all of these measures. And as Mike has uh, mentioned, helping yet not holding hands is a very nice put uh, uh, statement. And uh, Armando, I want to uh, get uh, to address this question to you. I will just briefly list all of the um, or, or some of the measures, I will try to summarize what has been said. So from grants uh, for startups, helping yet not holding hands, to added value services like overall assessment of business needs, anticipating the market. And also many of the classes have said merge with big companies, uh, different models, venture clienting, for example, in the case of uh, Martin, connecting startups with big companies, many different models uh, to do it, corporate startup collaboration programs, soft landing programs abroad, helping uh, explore the markets abroad, collaboration with business angel networks, uh, raising awareness of financial opportunities, uh, partner opportunities, uh, client journey approach, uh, and grants, as I have mentioned, and also many of the clusters, as we have noticed, like to work with scale-ups rather than uh, 
uh, startups so they prefer scale ups because this is more challenging but yet more interesting uh, this is the picture that we get from clusters uh, what i want to ask you is uh, how does that sound to you do you see uh, uh, another a new niche where public funding may come in into these public uh, into these private funding schemes that there are so many you know models of what, what would your comment be well uh, the, um, in a nutshell the, i think the the situation is very scattered. I mean, uh, uh, if we put in uh, national funding, regional funding, uh, uh, available funding uh, from the EU, the EU level, uh, and also the different needs that uh, uh, are there. I mean, uh, um, in a, in a times of uh, uh, like prioritization, I think we, uh, I think the big effort is to to try and see where are the the needs. Uh, the the needs are there uh, in different areas, as you. As I think this is a bit the summary uh, that uh, um, of the of this uh, discussion today. Uh, but I see that uh, there is also a big uh, uh, effort to be done in trying to prioritize what are the the biggest uh, uh, drivers of uh, um, of competitiveness and growth for Europe. So I mean, startups and scale ups. Uh, we have seen what 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 happened in the US, where basically a few uh, like companies that grow really bring an added value to to the economy. So I mean, uh, we have to develop our own way of uh, uh, our own economy. But uh, I think that uh, to uh, we should not uh, uh, forget about uh, uh, the funding needs of those companies, which could become uh, like really the big companies of tomorrow if we see the listed companies in in the main stock exchange in europe there are a lot of uh, like uh, blue chips which are there since uh, many years so i mean i think we need in europe to develop somehow a culture of uh, new fresh innovative companies uh, and so i mean to foster and to nurture this uh, uh, this ecosystem, uh, I think we need uh, a diversified uh, set, but we should not forget that uh, setting priorities for for funding uh, uh, in times of scarce public resources is very important. We cannot like uh, allocate money like here and there, but I think uh, setting some priorities will be essential. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is, could be a bit uh, my take. Is InvestEU accessible to non-EU members who reside in the EU? There are for um, for uh, uh, outside the EU. There are other instruments of uh, of the of the of the Commission. InvestEU is mainly uh, to like develop the uh, competitiveness and the, the real economy in Europe. This is the, the its main purpose. And uh, yeah, then uh, the, the Commission has in place other other instruments for uh, third countries and for development abroad. And uh, Stephanie, I think there's a question for you. SCS works only with French companies or not just with French companies? Mm, it's quite regional. The region I'm talking about, Southeast, is quite regional. We work with a lot of French companies. Not that much uh, on, on an international level, apart when we are in European projects uh, as a cluster for our members. In this case, we are much closer to, to, to European companies, but it's much more French. Okay. Uh, we see, and that's a question from the audience, we see a struggle of funding when there is a heavy asset requirement. Which current financial models do not fit? What do you think? And do you see the same? Basically, do you agree with the statement and which current financial models do not fit? Who would want to uh, take this one? Martin, Katrina, uh, Armando? Anyone? Everyone's being very quiet. I'm just trying to put it into context from a financial services and all I keep thinking is manufacturing ideas when I read heavy assets requirements. But um, look, I suppose some of the struggles that our sector in particular are going to be looking at is across the whole cybersecurity area. So quantum is moving very quickly. And I see there's somebody on the call there from Berlin and quantum technology clusters love to talk to you about what's going on over there. But um, I think this all boils back down to 
there are Davids and Goliaths, and I know I refer to that phrase all the time, but there are Davids and Goliaths in all of our regions. And if Armando or the European Commission could maybe look at some form of tax incentive for the Goliath to open their door to the David that's on their doorstep and bridging this really robust grassroots service up from the regions themselves, because we clearly have a robust network amongst all the ECCP that are on the grassroots stages that understand what the services are of the SMEs and their given sectors. And we could lead to an exchange of ideas and best practices in creating, sparking creativity and innovation to, to derive on. And we have that evidence in our fund management sector where we led to the development of products and services and processes for the traditional funds industry member. And when I think of funds, like they're custodial banks, they're Goliaths as, as, money, as much as you could call a Goliath today. Um, and in our case study, we took an example of a reg tech firm and the company is called FundRex. And the investment firm then was CSE Global, who initially said, OK, we'll sit with you. We'll talk to you about, to you about our problems and we'll develop the, the technology collaboratively and share what we can do to, to, to collectively to do so, to address, um, like what uh, Stephanie was uh, mentioning earlier, con the compliance and risk heroes that we could become, they were anticipating what regulation changes were occurring in the sector. And there's Micah, there's, there's lots of different anagrams I could list off here, which I, I won't bore everyone with, but lots of regulation changes coming into the financial services sectors today. So now through our cluster, we actually showcase these two firms and we show them off proudly to say, look, this is the continuous exchange. This is a challenge that's going to continue facing regulation and customer expectations as well. And those two firms stand at the top of the stage and share their story. And it's continuously developing in technology as well. It's not it's not, it's not going to be an ever finished job. Um, mm -hmm. But now, interestingly, it's it's probing in others. And earlier I referred to a company called Transformate. They're the world's leading B2B global payments infrastructure and their home base and they're born in our region. So if you want to simplify, digitize, automate your manual tasks of payment and getting paid, I actually looked at, I wonder how are the EU um, funds transferring at the moment, but these are the, the party to, to go to to offer that in enhanced global payment services. So mm -hmm. because of their Goliath status, again, we use that and they act as a big brother and they completely understand where we are coming from. But they were the SME 10, 12 years ago with the initial idea. And whether it's prototype or ideation or whatever it is, how fast can we get to purchase orders and where can those purchase orders be? So are they on a global scale with a particular product? And if they are aligned with who the parties that transformate would be, um, partnering with across the globe, where, as I said, they had access to transfer funds to and from 201 mm. countries in 141 currencies, and they hold 92 licenses. That's huge for a lot of our SMEs to be able to tap into that culture and that global market. It's a massive competitive advantage. And it goes back to maybe the ask of what kind of incentives or tax taxation reliefs can we offer the delights to open their doors to the SMEs? Okay, we'll refer this uh, question to Armando, but just in a minute, because Martin has his hand raised, uh, I think that we can uh, listen to you now. Yeah, I would also like to add something to this question. First of all, it's actually great that there is a demand for financing heavy assets. Um, because uh, what I think is that the, before uh, we all saw these uh, digital scale ups and and uh, of course it's... it's um, term of yeah that there is not a market dominance for example for us and and china platforms but i think the second competition now is about for example sustainability technologies and they are usually we cry um heavy uh, assets heavy yeah and and this is important now to uh, see how we can finance that uh, for example when it comes to new raw materials yeah to Cooper, lithium, things like that. There's also uh, important to have new technologies in, and it requires that. So uh, I think it's, I don't have an answer on that question, but it's very important that we change our mind 
in seeing the next competitions in financing uh, scale ups in, in that kind of uh, businesses. And there, it's also very important, I think, that the EU sees that uh, the EU needs to be a market for that. And this is also what the US uh, uh, does. Yeah, this venture clienting, for example, they don't call it venture clienting, but all the uh, IT giants uh, like Google are doing this since 20 years. And it's not just about the, the uh, capital access in the US, it's also about that they are building these kind of ecosystems and getting these very early contracts for these startups. Of course, they are then later acquiring these startups. This is a difficult discussion then, but there is also a large market for that. And uh, this is why I would like, again, uh, um, mention venture clienting as a chance mm to be as a EU, as, as a market. And what we are doing, for example, we are active in Southeast Asia, Singapore, for example, and, and we have corporations with startups from Singapore who are now seeing Germany and also the EU, then the advantage of the EU. I mean, sometimes you need to explain this, yeah, open borders, um, but then afterwards they see the benefits in being active here. And this is also uh, we we uh, need to to mention that we have the chance to also uh, be a region for uh, global startups to be active here to to grow. And uh, because usually the question is only for them, yeah, US or or China, and why not EU? Okay, uh, that's a very broad but a very important comment, Armando. Very briefly, what would you say on the tax incentives and what uh, Martin has uh, now said? Yeah, no, I'm very quickly as we are running, but uh, tax incentive uh, dimension is, uh, of course, the other side of the coin of the public uh, funding, no? Uh, so the way, like, uh, it should be taken into account that, uh, uh, like, public budgets uh, uh, have different priorities, of course, and uh, uh, we have, for instance, the incentives which are, uh, are in place to attract more equity financing, like business angels, venture capital into startups, uh, Pace are somehow uh, how to say uh, biased towards debt. Like I mean, the the tax incentive design of the uh, of the public body is generally favoring the more uh, uh, debt financing, like reduction of the interest from the the loans. So I mean, uh, um, of course, uh, fiscal policy is, uh, is a national uh, is a national dimension. So the Commission does not have much. Uh, uh, say on this, but there is, uh, for instance, some proposals like uh, the debt equity bias uh, um, reduction uh, proposal, so called the DEBRA, uh, which aims uh, to somehow uh, balance <laughs> this, uh, this uh, bias that is in place. This is one of the things that could be done, but of course, uh, uh, it's something which is in place and uh, uh, giving a, an additional encouragement for investors to come into different through fiscal incentives to come into this space is, is of course more than welcome. Okay, uh, thank you so much for all of these comments. I want to move towards uh, a summary and I want to ask you what you think the best practices and lessons learned from your experience in supporting uh, startups and scale-ups are. And I hear that Mike is saying that and some of you have said as well, we must develop uh, the European way. Mike Harvey says that the American way teaches teaches the EU lessons what not to do. Uh, but what do you think that uh, European way uh, could be? I hear that Katrina says Fundrex is, is a good example. Martin says that uh, venture, uh, what was uh, uh, the term exactly? Let me now... Uh, Venture clienting is a way to move forward, right? What about what are some other ways in which we could uh, develop our own European way? What would your uh, summary uh, of of all of the support mechanisms be, Anna? Let's uh, maybe start closing up with you. Uh, I'm very much hands on <laughs> working with startups, so I have a maybe a micro view. Uh, but uh, what uh, so far worked the best for us was a tailored uh, support. So um, especially in the scaling phase, uh, needs of startups are different. Uh, so um, having a very tailored offer of um, support uh, by um, industry experts, for example, of um, uh, vouchers for a particular 
um, participating in particular relevant for them uh, events like trades, uh, like fairs, like uh, um, business trips. This is something that so far in our case uh, brought the, um, the most uh, tangible uh, results. Um, so it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to sell when you want when you are applying uh, for um, a grant to support your clients like like we do. But um, so far, this is the most um, most uh, efficient uh, way to support and really deliver the uh, the value um, that uh, startups are looking for. Thank you, Rafaela. Yes. Uh... Thanks a lot for giving me the floor right now because I do share what Anna has just uh, mentioned since it's the core part also of the services we are developing both as a Chamber of Commerce in general and as a member of the EN uh, network. Actually, the partnering services, uh, the capacity to connect um, startup uh, and scale up companies with other stakeholders, both private and public, is key to help them grow and meet new um, uh, market opportunities. And uh, on the other hand, I would say also a, a field of activities we are trying to support as much as we can is also the developing of competencies and matching the needs companies do register in terms of uh, professional figures, roles to be in, in, inserted in their staff member, in their staff with respect to the offer which normally, I mean, experience is quite a certain uh, good level of gaps. So uh, th that's a part we are working on together with regional governments uh, and uh, um, uh, institutes, professional institutes. So vocational uh, training is, uh, again, a, a, an important pillar and competencies do play an important uh, role in that, along with sustainability, twin transition and, and so forth. Thanks. Uh, Carla is asking something very interesting. I just want to raise this question in case someone has an immediate uh, response. Do raise your hands. Can the EU regulation and imposed limits to AI be a setback for AI businesses? We are aware that some third countries are trying to attract European startups, attract European startups and SMEs. So ca can the EU regulation and imposed limits to AI be a setback for AI businesses? Anyone uh, uh, has a take on AI. Uh, Armando, what can we say? I know that you're working with startups and SMEs, not with AI specifically, but uh, if you have a comment here, that would be your la yeah, last well, chance to intervene. I, I, I would say that uh, regulation on uh, EU was like um, the first well, to, to regulate AI. So, of course, uh, uh, this uh, uh, being the, the first uh, mover, like uh, um, uh, set somehow the, the international setting. And I think this is a, a very important uh, feature of the EU when you were saying what is the European way. The European way is, uh, is good in setting the standards, the regulatory standards in terms of not only for AI, but let's say for instance what, that, what happens with Basel, uh, with the banking uh, regulations, like in Europe, the, the way how we regulated the uh, capital requirements uh, in uh, in uh, on uh, Basel rules uh, uh, helped uh, the banking system to be quite resilient during this uh, last crisis that uh, last year happened, for instance, in the Silicon Valley banks in uh, in America. So the fact that, uh, I mean, we are very precise and try to be very strict on regulations uh, uh, in Europe is something that should not be underestimated. I, I think it's a very important aspect that uh, uh, that defines the European way. And uh, for our startups, having a certainty in the regulatory environment, it's it's very important. And uh, in, over time, this will create a, like a, an investment environment that is should be quite positive. Mm -hmm. I don't think... Uh, just one word on AI businesses, because uh, yeah. what, what we see is that we have plenty of AI compete co people that are very skillful. Okay, a trained, a good universities, good uh, uh, ways of uh, approaching AI issues. And of course, what we see is that these people are just moving outside Europe and go to the US or, 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 or somewhere else. That's for true. And it's not today, it's, it started a long time ago. So um, what is important, I think, is uh, uh, 
to keep these people in Europe, wh whatever, whatever the country, but to keep them in Europe. The only way to keep them is to have big, big, large unicorns or companies that are at the same level as the, the, the US ones, for instance. And that's the only way. And the only way is big funding because you, you just retain them because you have the big funding for their ambition. And these people are just people that have ambition and that want to, 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 to stay here and, and do the, the job here. But you need means for that. You need, you, you need plenty of, of means to, to, to keep them. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Uh, big funding, more unicorns. Katrina, what is the European way to move forward? Um, I always kind of bring it back to your reputation is really hard earned and easily lost. And OK, whilst many might look in on Europe and say, oh, gosh, you know, it's safe and it's steady. And it's um, I think, yes, there are groundbreaking technology that we all have to admit we're finding it hard to keep up with some of this today. And um, I do see um, what Stephanie has relayed there, that exit of really robust talent gone to the US or gone somewhere else, but I'm also seeing them come back. And, you know, like I suppose it's, it's always that open arms society and trying to bring them back um, and maybe be brave enough. And, and I think we're in a really strong position to I said, encourage people to take the courage to make the leap and become the unicorn themselves. We've seen in our own region several companies that haven't gotten quite to the unicorn status. And in Ireland, we only have a small number of them. Um, How many unicorns have you got in, in Ireland in total, I think not necessarily fintech? I don't think we've broken 10 yet, but I can be corrected on that now. But you look, Transformate is the 10th unicorn and that broke status in 2020. Okay. And when we look at all of the new unicorns globally, um, there is majority in prop tech and fintech. I think the first one in 2024 was a fintech. So like it is that it, it has a tech basically at the other side of the world um, and whether it, and, all, and all sectors are being affected by it. But um, Transformate namely is the first female led unicorn as mm. well. And, you know, uh, kudos to Sinead and, and, and she gives great support to it all. But it is her inspiration that has I suppose, taken that idea of, yeah, sure, look, we were once where you were and sister companies of theirs have now merged and gone into acquisitions where they've, I suppose, they've acquired big deals and 600 million range prices, okay? So I, when I refer to tax incentives and everything else earlier on, I think something in the European way that we could look at is also trying to nurture the continuous support rather than the, exit strategy um, in merging with the Goliath firms that are out there and, and, and acquisitions. Now, that's not for everybody to stay in the company and that's their own individual rights. But um, I do think, look, bring the talent back, that really rich talent, keep nurturing in our talent here on our own doorstep. I would call for a European passport for education in all of the new digital translation and uh, translations that we have now for the 40 plus year old or the 30 plus year old. Um, where possible, merge them with the younger client in that mix up, have that blended across all of Europe. There should be one single European passport for these digital transitions, not this constant cost and change in all of the individual regions. And we're spending money in a very similar fashion in lots of different areas when it should be a blanket resource for Europe. Thank you. This is brilliant. Very, very specific recommendations and uh, really deep and uh, important insights. Uh, Martin, uh, what would you add to uh, keep nurturing talent, European passports, and then also the funding and, and unicorns that we discussed? I think it's uh, you know, three or four points. The first thing is um, a clear strategy, what we need on short, mid and long term in there. Um, what comes next, what is important for us in terms of te especially technology, uh, materials, things like that. Then the second one connected to that, no, no dump money, yeah, um, that we can also learn from the US or from the Emirates right now and don't throwing it after things we, where we maybe already lost the race. So making sure that we investing it wisely. Um, and then um, 
I think it's important to not uh, celebrate too much the success stories, but more support them and learn from that. I see that also in, in clusters, in smaller examples, that there are great examples when, when a startup grows and and it's a great story and definitely uh, it's important to appreciate that, but it's important to analyze that and support that and uh, thinking about how we can have more of that. And remember, there can be also yeah dark sides, that's normal. And then things are not happening uh, that, that's, uh, like we had, for example, in Germany with Wirecard. And the last point is... Um, working more together, yeah, seeing the EU as a large market. So for example, we have great corporations with uh, uh, Sweden, Ignite Sweden, or in France uh, with Business France. And uh, this is a very strong advantage we have in the EU and we should foster that, that we have uh, really business relations. And it's very easy to do it with startups because they are more agile mm -hmm. in making mm -hmm. connections between the countries. Mm, so more cooperation as well. Thank you so very much. Thank you for being very specific, for singling out uh, specific points on what we need to do. And uh, we are getting feedback from the audience, great discussion from different perspectives. I think we all want to mature our startup system uh, and sharing practices is key to become successful. Maybe it would be interesting to investigate to what extent our programs uh, more effective uh, impact startups to become scale ups in a budget in a budget constraint environment. We all have seen there are many different kind of services to support startups to becoming scale ups. So obviously this is the discussion that needs to still continue and uh, we'll do it. But Martin is raising his hand again. I think he wants to make a very brief final comment yes. so that we can. Sorry, interrupting your last words, but uh, one important point: if there are any clusters who have a vibrant start startup system in the EU, you can. Uh, come back to me because we are looking for more corporations yeah we can offer you the companies uh, who can give projects to your startups so feel free to contact me over linkedin or uh, any other channel sorry no no that's wonderful that this is what we want to do more cooperation we do it by actually encouraging to cooperate that's absolutely very natural and normal and thank you so much and i think we have delayed this a little bit because there are so many inputs from all of you but i want to thank you very much for really interesting comments and insights and for this uh, discussion which i'm um, finally wrapping up now and uh, moving to the next uh, final bits of our uh, cluster stock and then we let everyone go and, and continue with their uh, daily uh, routine so uh, thank you so much everyone and uh, we'll we will now discuss the funding opportunities uh, Nina what uh, what do we do I'll give the word back to Nina who will just briefly list the uh, funding opportunities that exist for uh, for you many things uh, great points to follow uh, many thanks to the panelists very interesting discussion uh, I'll wrap it up quickly and there's a call uh, that is called Startup Europe um, from the Horizon EIE program, the European Innovation Ecosystems program, which wants to foster more connected, inclusive and efficient innovation ecosystems. And the program uh, seeks to, uh, and especially this call, uh, increase the market footprint of European startups in strategic digital technologies and deep tech innovation. Uh, get the startups better connected and to enhance the connection of individual innovators with other ecosystem actors, as well as improve the capacity of public and buyers to procure innovative solutions. The deadline for this call is the 25th of April. It's under the Horizon Coordination and Support Action. You see the topic ID here on the screen, and we will put the link in the chat. Another call that is open is the Mutual Learning and Support Scheme for National and Regional Innovation Programs. Here, proposals should reduce fragmentation of innovation ecosystems and national and regional startup support schemes. We should uh, look into enhancement of cross-border network connectivity and regional collaboration, as well as strengthen and expand cooperation between the innovation ecosystems worldwide, foster inclusive and gender innovation uh, ecosystems introduce territorial inequalities. Deadline for this is the 19th of September. It's also a horizon call with the topic ID in the screen and the link in the chat. We also like to um, inform you that the third call of the Interreg Europe program is open until the 7th of June. Uh, Interreg Europe seeks to exchange and transfer 
experiences, innovation approaches, and capacity capacity building among public authorities and other policy relevant organizations across Europe. And uh, basically, you can have uh, projects that are in line with the needs of your regions. There are three uh, domains that are set out in particular. One is smarter Europe, um, involves the research and innovation capacities by fostering the adoption of aggressive technologies. The other one is greener Europe, so looking into mitigating environmental impact and promote sustainability, and social Europe to foster social well-being and inclusive inclusivity. So if you'd like to um, apply for the Interact Europe call, uh, have a look at the website of Interact. You'll find all the details of this third call with the deadline of 7th of June. And if you're looking into Ukraine, there's a, a new call, the EU-Ukraine Cluster Partnership Program. Here, the action will support Ukrainian business integration into EU value chains and the development of cooperation projects and partnerships between Europe and Ukraine uh, clusters and business networks, looking into basically establishing and running a cluster partnership. And there are two lines that the proposal should address. One is developing value chain interlinkages between EU and Ukrainian companies. And the other one is fostering the cluster capacity building and professionalization of support of both EU and Ukrainian SMEs. Deadline for this call is the 4th of June, and the Info Day will take place on the 22nd of April. Under the single market program with the topic ID in the screen, and we put the link in the chat. And of course, last but not least, look into the open calls from our Euro clusters. Um, there are many opportunities into uh, training, into innovation, uh, support, into uh, the adoption of technologies or uh, processes, as well as internationalization. So if you have SMEs in your networks that are currently looking into concrete funding opportunities in their respective ecosystems, please check whether the Euro clusters have currently goals that are directly um, supporting SMEs in different activities and ecosystems. They are all published in clustercollaboration.eu slash openings. And with that, uh, I hand over to you. Thanks. Thank you, Nina. And it's not that much that I uh, have to add. I just want to thank you for uh, that presentation and I want to remind everybody to register for the next uh, talks uh, on the 10th of April leading the twin transition advanced materials and key enabling technology 17th of April autonomy innovation and security EU strategies for aerospace and defense so that's the two dates all of the links are in the chat as well just as the links that uh, Nina has referred to the funding opportunities everything is in the chat so you if you're still here you can uh, just go to the links directly uh, European cluster collaboration platform a general uh, discussion group on LinkedIn we wanted to become very uh, much used by you and very popular too so do uh, also get a link to it and go on there right now and discuss anything that uh, we've we haven't covered today uh, and I think that's pretty much everything we wanted to tell you today do continue the discussion on LinkedIn and on other social networks visit the ECCP website follow the ECCP on social media uh, you can see the website here, the link uh, to the LinkedIn and uh, the hashtag that you may want to use uh, if you post anything related to the content that we discussed or a photo from this chat, anything, EU cluster stocks is the hashtag or the ECCP is the hashtag to use as well. So that's it for today. And thank you so much for this really very interactive and lively and insightful discussion. Have a good rest of the day and see you next time. Thank you.